Kia ora, good evening. Labour Minister Simon Bridges today announced the adult minimum wage is to rise to $14.25 an hour. The current adult minimum wage rate is $13.75 an hour. The starting out and training minimum wages will increase from $11 an hour to $11.40, which is 80% of the adult minimum wage. Mr Bridges says setting these wage rates represents a careful balance between protecting low-paid workers and ensuring jobs are not lost. He says the increase balances the need of both business businesses and workers and will have minimal impact on the wider labour market and inflationary pressures. The new minimum wage rates come into effect on the April, April 1st this year. Invercargill's inaugural Southern Wild Foods Festival went off without a hitch on Saturday and organisers estimate up to $20,000 was raised for the Rape and Abuse Service Centre Southland, this year's event benefactor. Well over 2,000 people attended the Southern Wild Food Festival held for the first time at Stadium Southland. The event was the brainchild of and organised by the Invercargill Rotary Club, who roped in about 70 volunteers to ensure the event's smooth operation on the day. Held on the stadium's new community courts, there were 21 stallholders, made up mainly of community groups. Commercial ones we hope to build up next year and a lot of the community groups are first time stall holders so we think that's fantastic because that's what we wanted to do was um, give them the opportunity to raise some funds for themselves. Playing it safe, stall holders didn't go down the bugs and grubs road this year. It's more trying to work with the, um, the wild game in the area and the fish seafood side of things. So, Do you think it might develop into some of those more quirky types of foods going forward? I hope it does, um, but I'd still like to keep that Southland theme to it, to keep it authentic for us down here. Southland seafood was proving a popular choice on the day. A horopedo squid, so it's like a salt and pepper. We've ditched the pepper and put horopedo, which is a bush pepper herb. Deer don't like it because it's too hot in their mouth, so we've taken that out and um, now we just quick stir on the risotto. So we've taken the pepper out and put horopedo in. So we have a tomato juice with, shot with uh, a can of roe in it, a can of roe on a parsley and um, mint um, mix, and a natural, so just a can of shot. So, What's proving the most popular? Um, generally people going for the natural, so they get the, the flavour. If they're a bit chicken, they go for the... Um, Tomato juice. And some samplers were definitely braver than others. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have tried the uh, braised chicken feet from Ocean Seafood. They are delicious. The bones, got to pick your way through those, but they are very tasty. And for those less than keen on the sea's bounty, there were plenty of other land-based options, including whitebait, eel, duck liver pate, haggis and local cheeses. Musical entertainment, cultural groups and cooking demonstrations kept crowds entertained. While his worship the mayor, Tim Shadbolt's taste buds got a workout with a chilli and chocolate challenge. They said it would clean out my sinuses, but I think it's clearing out a lot more than that. <laughs> As a first-time event, there was a bit of guesswork in estimating how much produce storeholders would need on the day. Really got to rely on the organisers, given that it's the first year of the festival, um, so we've got to rely on them. So they've given us a bit of an indication. So we've got uh, 600 portions of each of our main and also uh, 300 portions of a little taster of venison um, roulette that we've got. Benefactors of the door take for the first event were on-site peddling healthy drink options and were full of praise for the organisers. Yeah, just so grateful that we can be the first benefactors and uh, that hopefully it's going to be an annual event and other NGO um, organisations are going to benefit from the um, charity of Rotary and lots of hard work really. The Invercargill Rotary Club has confirmed the event will go ahead next year when another not-for-profit group will receive a welcome funding boost. Margot Sutherland, South Today News. Using the internet to conduct online government services is proving to be a hit with Kiwis. There's been a 29% increase in government services transactions online since June 2012 and by December last year an average of 43.3% of these types of transactions were conducted online. 
Some of the key government services provided digitally include renewing passports, filing individual tax returns, overseas visas and paying for vehicle licences. Minister for Internal Affairs Peter Dunn says government's aiming for New Zealanders to be able to complete 70% of their most common transactions with government online by 2017. Some of the South's 12 and 13 year olds were learning the value of innovation today while understanding how to operate their own business. Over 130 secondary students from six high schools converged in Invercargill for the half day event, learning how to make money while competing for prizes. Student picked up, students picked up hints and tips about brainstorming and innovation, how to set up and run their own businesses produce a product or service as well as profit and loss. New business knowledge was supplemented by skills and teamwork, communication, problem solving, negotiation and decision making. The event was run by the Southland Lion Foundation Young Enterprise Scheme and is coordinated by the Chamber of Commerce Southland. Stay with us after the break, a Kākāpō recovery update and National MP for Eric, Invercargill Eric Roy plays down his party's lead in the opinion polls. Welcome back. One of three female kākāpō released onto the Little Barrier Island in 2012 is nesting on three fertile eggs. Nine critically endangered kākāpō were transferred to the island in the Hauraki Gulf to determine its suitability as a long-term unmanaged site. And it was anticipated it could take 10 years to find out whether kākāpō were able to raise chicks without support on the island. The Kākāpō recovery team are excited by the find and say of the 15 eggs found across seven nests, just three are viable, six proving infertile and one dying as an early embryo, a further five eggs are still to be checked. Despite not being able to recall a time when a government's been in such a strong position after five and a half years in office, MP for Invercargill Eric Roy is playing down poll results that would see national govern alone if an election were held tomorrow. Hunter Andrews asked Mr Roy about recent opinion polls, field days and the race for the national nomination for the Invercargill seat. In my lifetime in politics, I've never known a government have this level of support after five and a half years. That's good, but the job isn't done, and we've just got to keep working and make sure that we deliver and not lapse back into sloppy habits of government ineffective spending and you know, a whole lot of things where we're losing that momentum. Um, it's, I think, pretty encouraging that we're starting to get credit ratings back again too. I think one of 11 countries in the world now back with uh, Standard & Poor's AAA. Um, that's, that's encouraging that we've, we've actually got the formula right but the job isn't finished. Let's talk locally, and I know the process is very confidential in selecting your replacement. Uh, are you an interested observer from the outside, and when do you think we'll know? Uh, yeah, well, I, I am neutral, uh, and uh, the process will conclude, I understand, this Friday, uh, when the candidate will be announced. So we'll, we'll have someone who will be the national candidate announced Friday night, with all things being equal. A quick word on, well, perhaps field days, and we, you mentioned off camera that you were one of the original organisers. How have things changed since 1982? We're talking about the Y movie yes. field days here. Um, yeah, well, in, in, interesting. I was in Young Farmers at the time, and, and one of the things I said to um, the team around us, we need, we need to do some things that just extend us a little bit. And so, so what are our goals? And we sat down and worked out, well, we need to do something that was useful, something that added skills and was a shop window for young farmers and tossed around a whole lot of ideas and, and centred on the field days. First one held in 1982, middle of March. About 550-odd people came, something like 55 or 58 exhibitors. And that was the germ of what happens. And you look the other day, I don't know, 25,000 maybe through in the three days. Uh, that big half a hectare clear span uh, agri centre now and, and they're just going from strength to strength. It's certainly been a great thing for Southland and it's the second biggest in the country behind Mystery Creek so it's, it's just met a need and it's fulfilled all of those things that we talked about when we kicked the idea off in late 1981. Do you think it's taken a bit of the prestige away from the old AMP show? I think that it's meeting a need that the AMP show's never moved into, which um, is moving into um, 
Well, an, an area of objective measurement and availability of technology and a whole lot of those things where yeah, some of the A&P shows have, have held to the um, eye appraisal animal selection on confirmation and all of those things which are an important part but they're now a smaller subset of what farming is today. Favourable weather allowed vintage aircraft flights over Mandeville on Saturday but adverse conditions Sunday kept everyone grounded during this year's fly-in at the Croydon Aircraft Company. Aircraft enthusiasts took the opportunity of the clear skies Saturday to fly in one of the vintage Tiger Moth biplanes that form part of the Croydon Aviation Trust's collection housed at Mandeville just outside Gore. Also taking part this year was the New Zealand Tiger Moth Club who stayed in the region following the celebration of the centenary of Will Scotland's historical flight from Invercargill to Gore on Thursday. On Sunday, visitors were confined to the aircraft museum after weather conditions deteriorated, grounding all flights. The five southern mayors today released a brochure detailing how their councils have been working together since 2000 to share services. Shared Services Southland and Beyond has been jointly pro produced by Environment Southland, the Invercargill City and Gore, Southland and Clutha District Councils. Shared Services Committee Chair Jeff Grant says that there have been more than 50 inter-council collaborative projects worked on during the past 14 years. Hunter Andrews spoke to both Jeff Grant and Invercargill Mayor Tim Shadbolt. So Shared Services is made up of the four local authorities down here, plus Clutha is involved as well in some of the programmes. And what effectively they do is look at uh, what processes and administration they can save in terms of both costs and services by combining on a whole range of activities. Where are the success stories? Well probably the biggest one was originally in terms of environmental waste which is the establishment of collecting all the waste in Southland and doing it through the Hedgehope. But the bigger work's been an IT platform, so the councils are combined around getting the same IT platform so that other shared services will work more effectively. A new one in the area of building authority, so there's looking at combining all the building authority in the southern region into one to make it much more streamlined in terms of the way new buildings or renovations are done in New Zealand. Things never go as smoothly as we like, I guess. Has there been resistance? Uh, look, I think that once you establish through the Shared Services Forum, the policy about what they're going to do. And they meet four times a year with the councillors and the senior management team. Then we have a CEO's group that meets at IT every six weeks and we work through the programme. You start to understand which ones are going to work really well and easily and uh, it's been quite surprising. Some projects that you think will be slow have taken... Well, there are some that will take a bit longer and the uh, IT one's been one of those. We've been on it now for three years and there's still quite a bit of work to do to get the efficiencies in there. Is it noticeable each year that, 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 that Shared Services is eating into that expenditure and, and giving more ratepayers value for money, I guess? Yes, because we're moving now into IT, information technology, um, building consents. I mean, why should it be that when you get a building consent in Gore, it's different to the one in Southland and different to the one in Invercargill? It's just illogical. So I think for builders and developers, uh, it'll provide a lot of comfort. Central Government will be very happy, won't they? Uh, did the impetus to, to get together with other councils come from them originally? Did they say, look, um, we're going to amalgamate you if you don't start looking at these areas? Well, they're not usually that blunt, but they well, do. Is that what they were intimating? <laughs> they certainly suggest that if we don't get on with the job and become more efficient and work together cooperatively, then they'll do it for us. And they're likely to use a fairly blunt instrument when they do it. So it is an incentive to get on with the job. But I think we have learned from many examples, not just contained in this booklet, but uh, fighting together over neurology and working together through the SIT and working together on uh, various tourist things like the Southern Scenic Route uh, and now the bicycle track network that we're setting up. There are a lot of benefits if you work cooperatively. And that's all from the news team tonight. Sport is up next with post-match reaction following the Highlanders' victory in the first round of the Super 15 over the Blues. From us, good night.